Oh, you cutie babe, aren't you? You're good, boy. the last creative challenge of the Because We Can readathon and I feel like every time it comes to like day seven of this readathon it does get a bit sad because it does mean that it's going to be over in a day and this is the last day of reading or at least trying to read as much as I can for the readathon. And for today's creative challenge it revolves around Never Have I Ever which is a TV show that I have saved on my list but I haven't actually watched it yet and I couldn't really think of too much to do for this one and because I'm a bit pressed for time and space to do certain things I'm just going to be doing the bookish never have I ever tag that was made by Anne with a book. So she did this as a blog post like ages and ages ago and it is just 10 questions of bookish never have I ever's and I'm excited to see how many I've actually done or not. First one is never have I ever read a later book in a series before reading the first book and I'm gonna say that I have but not like knowingly because it has happened with companion series where I've read like the third one in a series without realizing there was two books before it that were about other characters so it doesn't really ruin the reading experience when you accidentally do that but I've never done it with a, like a full-blown series where I like pick up book two and then I'm like what this is so confusing it's only happened for a companion series but I'm still gonna say like yes it has happened <laughs> number two is never have I ever burnt a book and no no, I have not. I have not done this. This is something I would not do. I have seen some people on TikTok do this whole burning a book thing and I am just not for that. I am so good for not burning a book. <laughs> Next, never have I ever read a book I knew I was gonna hate and I have done this because sometimes there is books that are just so hated but you haven't read them and you still want to know the reasons why people hate them and obviously people can tell you those reasons but you can't really experience them until you've read the book yourself. And I know that there has been a few but I can't really think of any right now but I definitely know it is a thing as you see bad reviews and you know you're not gonna like it but you're still like ha, YOLO I'm gonna do it and then you hate yourself for doing it because the book sucks so it's it's not a fun time really but it is something I have done okay next one is never have I ever wrote a fan fiction about my favorite book and like no I haven't written a fan fiction about the night circus I did write a fan fiction for um, the mortal instruments that I literally did 10 pages of and then gave up. There was another one that I did fan fiction for that I can't remember that didn't make it very far but I did write a really massive fan fiction about Downton Abbey where basically I was just expanding on Sybil and Tom's love story and I was just adding in scenes that the show didn't have because they didn't happen so I literally had the source material of basically following the whole entire show but I just added a lot of stuff that was my own thing that I thought it was really random at the time but I was like really hardcore writing this for like three weeks and I wrote a hundred pages and then I stopped and I've never done anything else on it but I have written fan fiction but like does it count? I would say like all the Shadowhunter Chronicles are some of my favorite things so I'm gonna say it's a yes I have done this. Okay never have I ever loved a book when I was young and hated it when I got older. Can I count Twilight? Because like mm, not that I hate it but it's just not as good as I thought but I feel like I can't actually say that this is a yes because I think more the prompt is saying like read a book when you were younger, read it when you were older and hated it and I haven't actually reread any of the books that I really read in my childhood besides the Mortal Instruments and then I didn't end up hating them and when I reread Twilight that happened at the time when I liked Twilight so I don't think I would ever reread Twilight now it's just too much it's too much stress to have to deal with these characters and the times that they have and it's just a bit dumb but that's fine but I definitely would say this is probably more of a no because there is books that I could reread but I don't want to because I know I'm gonna think badly of them if I do it so this is a no <laughs> okay never have I ever dressed up as any of my favorite literary characters and like yes I feel like I have done this like I remember one year in school I dressed up as Hermione for book week and there's been times with my Instagram photos when I've done like a little bit of cosplays and dress ups as like different characters but that's been for photos but I actually am so sad that I'm not the type of person that gets to go to costume parties when I like dressing up. Like I see so many videos where people have these awesome costume parties and dress up parties and they've all got amazing themes. But also all these people have lots of friends. I have like two friends so we wouldn't be able to do like our own big party. But, but if anyone wants to invite me to their dress up parties like please because I want to go. It sounds really fun but I definitely have dressed up like and I don't know who hasn't. Okay never have I ever hated a book by an author that I love and like yes. I 
I think we've all done this. Sometimes there will be books that we really enjoy and other times they are just not it. And definitely a prime example for me is one of my favourite books is Rain the Earth by AC Gorgon. And it was my favourite book of the year that I read it. But then I also read Scarlet, which was her other book. And it was my least favourite book in the year. So the fact that one author was able to win awards for my favourite book and the worst book I've ever read is just crazy but definitely this has happened to me. Okay, never have I ever gone into a bookstore to buy one book and come out with many and again, who hasn't done this? I just go into the bookstore when I want to buy nothing and I come out with 28 books. Like, this is something that I just don't have any self-control over. Even though actually when I went to the bookstore last, I only wanted to buy one book and then I bought two and I was really proud of myself but honestly, it's just so hard not to to do even when you're online shopping and you're like I just want to get this one thing and then you buy like 28 books and you're like what happened but it does happen okay never have I ever read the end of a book before reading the beginning and I have to say I've done this a lot I've done this a lot I am very bad for spoiling books for myself I'm sure you guys know this I am so much better than I used to be like honestly it was when I started booktube when I realized that this was like not a good thing <laughs> but I am so impatient and if I'm really concerned about people that are going to die I check the end of the book to know who survives and what's happening so I can kind of prepare myself but then I always feel shit about it when I look at the end of the book. Especially when it's books that I really, really care about. Like, reading Queen of Very Darkness was such a stress for me because I was just trying not to spoil it for myself. But there was, like, a couple of times when I've looked at certain things where I was just like, oh, no, why did I check this out? But it wasn't anything, like, really major. So all the really shock value things were able to get to me. And I find that with a lot of these conclusions in the series that I really enjoy... I don't look. And I also think it's good when I listen to audiobooks because I'm not just going to skip forward in the audiobook to then find out what happens. Like, that's way too much to do. Especially, too, because if I'm reading a book and it's really boring, I just have the inability to actually DNF anything. So I will check the end to see what happens. So then hopefully the intrigue of how they got from here to here keeps me reading. And generally that does work. But sometimes even with a shit book, I'm like, oh, why did I do that? Because now I'm like not going to be surprised by it. But I just am like my worst nightmare when reading books sometimes. <laughs> and finally, never have I ever read a book without the dust jacket on. And I just want to know who does read it with the dust jacket on. Like, it's not good. I know some people tape it down, but like you can ruin the book and the cover and the pages. I just take the thing off and just chuck it somewhere else. Like, I think it makes way more sense not to have the dust jacket on because so many people complain about reading hard covers. I'm one of them. I think they're very heavy and bulky a lot of the time and they're not floppy like paperback. But it is so much easier to read it without the dust jacket because you don't have to contend with it flopping all over the place like a paperback but I definitely do this like I have to read it without the dust jacket because it's just too hard okay 8 out of 10 is it good or is it bad because I feel like most people do these things like they're not too risque I think for a never have I ever book tag like I think it would be good if someone maybe did like a more intense version because I did have a search and I did have a look around and this was the only version of the tag that I could find but I also wanted to do this tag because I've always thought a never have I ever book tag would be really cool to do but anyway guys I hope you did enjoy the last creative challenge for the because we can readathon this was fun to do when I haven't done like a good book tag for a while I feel but anyway guys thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time bye